What if I told you that some problems in physics aren't just difficult to solve, they're unsolvable? Not because we lack the tools or intelligence or funding, but because they require calculations that are impossible and provably so. This is exactly what a group of physicists just showed. Let's have a look. Physicists are fond of saying that ultimately everything is physics, because the behavior of subatomic particles gives rise to chemistry, which gives rise to biology, which gives rise to psychology and sociology. But what if, along the line, the one doesn't follow from the other? Then these disciplines would all be similarly fundamental, and physicists would have to stop being smug, which would be really unfortunate. This could happen because there are some numbers in mathematics that we know exist, but that we can't calculate. They're uncomputable. And what if somewhere in that relation between the small things and the large things, there are such uncomputable numbers? then you could no longer make a prediction, because you can't predict something that you can't calculate. Well, at least you shouldn't. A new study now says that the behavior of macroscopic objects can indeed be impossible to calculate, but with some caveats. Their idea is based on the halting problem. That's the question of determining for an arbitrary computer program and its input whether the program will eventually halt or continue running forever. Alan Turing proved that there is no algorithm that can solve this problem for all possible programs. Answer the question question for some programs, because you can just run them and see what will happen. Some of them will halt. For the others, you'll at least know that they don't halt within the time you observe them. But there is no way to generally answer the question for all possible programs. The halting problem is undecidable. The halting problem gives rise to an uncomputable number, Chaitin's constant named after Gregory Chaitin. It encodes the probability that a randomly chosen algorithm halts, where the longer the algorithm, the less weight is given to its probability. These diminishing weights are there to avoid problems with infinity. But basically, to calculate Chaitin's constant, you need to know the probability that any algorithm halts, for which you need to know the solution to the halting problem, which you don't have. So, Chaitin's constant is uncomputable because the halting problem is undecidable. However, since you know that some algorithms halt and others don't within a finite time, you can approximate Chaitin's constant from below. If you were to wait for an infinite amount of time, then you'd get the constant precisely. So far, this is pure maths. But the authors of the new paper now use these properties of Chaitin's constant to construct a physical system that has uncomputable properties. They say, consider a lattice of particles that have quantum properties. The interactions between these particles, especially the strength of the interaction, can be controlled externally. This is something that physicists actually do in practice, usually with lasers. Yes, physicists really like lasers. What the authors of the paper do next is to construct an algorithm for a quantum computer that approximates Chaitin's constant. It's a quantum algorithm because the particles in the letters also have quantum properties. Then they map this algorithm to the particles of the letters. That is, they say they can engineer the letters so that the interaction strength between the particles depends on Chaitin's constant. Next, they have an external control variable that could be, for example, a magnetic field. And depending on how this interaction strength of the particles in the lattice compares to the external control variable, the system is in one of two different states. The one has a gap in the energy levels of the system called the spectral gap. The other one doesn't. Don't worry if you don't know what that is. Could be a gap in the front teeth for all I can tell. It only matters that it's a measurable property. And it changes at a critical value of this control variable, which derives from Chaitin's constant, which is uncomputable. So if you change the control variable, you can't compute what happens. This is a truly profound result. It means that even if you know the rules governing the system at a microscopic level, 
you can't predict the behavior at a macroscopic level. The behavior of the system is in some sense unknowable. As they write in their paper, our result implies that no general algorithm exists to determine the phase diagrams, even under the promise that the phase diagram is exceedingly simple and illustrates how uncomputable numbers may manifest in physical systems. But if you look at their maths, then that's only the case if you run the calculation for the interaction strength forever and the lattice is infinitely large. I wouldn't exactly call that physically realistic. Indeed, this isn't the first time scientists have tried to construct an uncomputable physical property and so far it's always required a system with infinitely many components. That makes me suspect that all these uncomputable properties only arise in some limit to infinity and therefore aren't physically real. So, plot twist, I think this result is evidence for the opposite of that claim. That said, I think this is a very interesting finding one way or another. Maybe one day we'll even find out whether the TikTok algorithm ever holds. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.